I have another question. This is from Pete Singer of Solid State Technology and Small Times. Um, he asks, if the panel could address the potential problem of heat generation with stacking multiple chips, uh, is there some kind of new approach to thermal, dis is some kind of new approach to thermal dissipation required? Basically, there have always been questions about heat, heat generation, yeah. and it's a 2D thing, it's a, a 3D issue yeah. also. The problem with 3D is, by stacking two chips on top of each other, you've effectively shrunk the total area of the chip you could reduce the power that's mm -hmm. generated within, or the heat that's dissipated, uh, generated within the chip, and that needs to be dissipated. It's the effective heat per square millimeter, mm -hmm. right, that goes up. And that's the problem. The other problem is you could have hot spots. Uh -huh. okay. And if you have dissimilar technologies, for instance, a memory technology would probably not take the kind of heat that a, a logic technology throws off. Okay, so that's really where the issues come up with heat. Uh, it would be nice to have some tools that would allow you to do thermally <laughs> aware uh, For all of those layout. You can't see. He just <laughs> looked at Rick. Right. Okay. <laughs> so it'd be really nice if you had something like that. But you know, there are a lot of other tricks, and some of them are, you know, more mature than others. Yeah. So you have a whole spectrum of ways to address the heat issue. So, for instance, if you have a logic and a DRAM die it becomes a question of where you'd place a heat sink. Okay. Okay? Yeah. So it's two levels. Yeah. Now if you have three or more levels, then you have to worry about what happens to the levels that are stuck in between, right? Yeah. And people have talked about using dummy TSVs, mm -hmm. which could be you know, conductive wicks, if you will, mm -hmm. that take the heat away. Mm -hmm. um, you could have microfluidic cooling. Mm -hmm. Again, these are at different stages of maturity. Mm -hmm. And depending on how severe the problem mm -hmm. is, you know, that more people will address them. You have a lot of elegant solutions to this issue. But I think the first thing that needs to happen is we need to be able to model these and simulate these to understand it better and so then do better right. better layout and floor plan. Yeah. And Synopsis yeah. is working on simulation. That's where your area is with simulation tools at the moment? or Yeah, definitely. So the thermal aware design, as Tron was mentioning, that's one of the key things that we're looking at. Okay. We, we agree that's a problem that has to be uh, addressed. Um, now, in some cases, like what we were talking about before, memory on processor, it's probably not going to be that bad, right? Yeah. It's when you really have a lot of stacking going on where you need to be concerned. And also, the hotspot issue is important when you now, from a physical design point of view, you're trying to decide where you put your big driver transistors that are big power hogs and are big heat generators. Mm -hmm. So you could think of ways where during your physical design you have to be concerned with how you actually um, uh, design your, your, your driver transistors and where you put them. So there's going to be a little bit more engineering on that side. It's the amount of power per square millimeter. And none of us have ever thought about, geez, we're not going to go to the next node in technology because we're going to make the processor die half the size it is, and therefore we won't be able to build it. It's fundamentally the same problem, and we do seem to find solutions through practical design. Certainly, the, 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 the near-term memory on processor type device, that's an easy solution, because from what we've seen, if you take the memory, put it on board the processor, the power drops you actually have a smaller power envelope yes. than in the original discrete 2D version because we burn so much power today in that I.O. between the parts. Um, one other thing I would point out is that we've looked at trying to get large thermal differences and it seems in 3D and I don't have a good set of reasoning for this. I have hand waving why we think it's the case. But we actually have more difficulty in creating hot spots in 3D than in 2D. The, the layers seem to be, have more metal and therefore seem to dissipate over the surface better than in 2D. Um, it's only anecdotal evidence. There's been uh, a few universities that have tried some things and I know that at one of the conferences I was at a couple of years ago, they came up with the same thing. In order to get like a five degree hot spot inside the stack, they were well over 100 watts of power dissipation. So 
3D may actually have some hidden benefits in there, which I don't fully understand myself. Okay, it looks like we have time for one last question. Um, and this one is also from Pete Singer. Pete's question, there's concern in the test community about the ability to access and test TSV connections that are hidden. Is there any solution to that, maybe from the design side? Um, so, right, so having a testable design is of course a requirement. And, um, but in that area, we, we feel from the design point of view that it's going to be an evolution on the current technologies. So we, we don't see big, big issues. I can, I can say that when we do wafer level, because of the amount of interconnect that we have, a typical design for us has about 10,000 interconnects per square millimeter. At the very high end, it's a couple hundred thousand interconnects. That's untestable. We can't possibly test it. But at chip to wafer level, we do scan type things because we need to resolve ultimately with our customers, because we don't build processors, but we put memory on them, Yours, mine, or ours is the reason that the part isn't bad, and this becomes the most important part of it, yeah. is it that the memory failed, the processor failed, or did the bond fail? And so we have our own structures that we've come up with so we can try to sort out with a two or three pin interface, yours, mine, or ours. Yeah. And we think that's very important because the applications we're targeting are high value applications because they're the first ones that can afford this kind of technology.